usually when you see a triathlon on TV, you see the mountains and the palm trees, and hey, we got skyscrapers and wackos out there. And I think it's good. From the shores of Lake Michigan, this is a world premier Olympic distance event. This is the Chicago Triathlon. Welcome everybody to the streets of Chicago. We're here on the streets of Chicago because this is where they hold the Chicago Triathlon. I'm Mike Landsberg. This is an incredible event. In terms of quantity and quality, there is nothing like it. Quantity, more than 4,000 will take part today. Quality, simply what every great triathlete is here today. If you've ever asked the question, who's the greatest short distance triathlete? You'll find the answer today. Great to welcome our color commentator, triathlon expert and triathlete himself, Graham Fraser. Graham, is this the field of the year? Without a doubt, Michael. You've got 40 men going head to head in an intense race. This is a fast, flat course. That makes it intense. They're going to hurt each other, and somebody's going to have to get away in the bike because it's going to be hard to separate. Let's take a look at the field. A field really dominated by former world champions. There's Mike, and there's uh, the Greg, and of course Simon, who's in such good form. Uh, it's going to be a very, very hard race, but uh, you know, I, I, I like looking forward to these sort of challenges. It's going to be uh, one that uh, I think is going to be a good one to remember. This is definitely a world championship course uh, with a world championship feel, and we have uh, you know, not only the best coming from um, Australia, uh, England, the United States and Canada, um, I think we've rounded out, you know, the best guys in the world right now. I think it's the race of the year. There's about six guys out there who can win and I know I have a chance but so do the others. I'm calling my personal world championships. You know, I can't say I'm going to win. It's too strong of a field. It's, it's a flip of a coin. An incredible field. Last year, Nate Morandi surprised everybody, a local boy, winning this race. If he wins this year, Graham, I guess it would be an even bigger surprise. It's a very deep field here. It would be a very big surprise to see him win. But he will be happy to see the swim out there with the big waves. It's to his advantage. Okay, how do you see it? Well, you got Mike Pig on the bike and you got Simon Lessing the run. You pick him. It depends on the lead you see Mike come off with on the bike. Great field of men, but also a great field of women dominated by two as well, Karen Smyers and McKaylee Jones. Karen, she's a tough athlete. Um, you know, if she has a good day, She's going to be tough. If I have a good day, I think I'll be tough. You know, I've been swimming pretty well this year, and you know it's going to be tough because there's a lot of people out there, and it makes it a little tougher to get away. But you know, hopefully, I can get a lead and and just make everyone hurt on the bike and try and get their running legs away. I always feel like it's sort of mine to win or lose. Like she always seems to have a good day, and uh, I'm the one that seems to be more up and down. Um, I'm going to have to stay with her in the swim. Uh, the minute she gets a lead on me, it's very hard to make up any time on her because she's just so good in all three sports. So it's going to be up to me to, to stick with her. And then I guess my only hope is uh, to have a little more strength than her over the distance. On this day, the Windy City has really lived up to its name. That's going to favor the Australian. Michaela Jones is the swimmer of the group. Look for her to take off in that swim. She from Australia, you, you swim in this all the time, you get used to it. Karen Smyers, though she's much improved, I don't know if she's going to be able to swim in these conditions and stay close. Great field of women, great field of men, but the story on this day is also all of the others. More than 4,000 others will leave from the beaches today. And one of the great things about an event like this in triathlon is the fact that you get amateurs, weekend people who are on the same course at the same time with guys like Mike Pig and Michaela Jones and Karen Smyers. How would you like to line up with Greg Norman at the U.S. Open? Too bad they don't allow that ticket. 
But triathlon's unique. They've got five-year age groups. They all compete within that age group. It's very important to them. They train, they're very disciplined athletes. And again, that is their sport. Today's broadcast, the Mrs. T's Chicago Triathlon from Chicago, is brought to you by Mrs. T's Pierogies, unique pasta pockets hiding in your grocer's freezer. Back with the start of the race, right after this. Active, your body heat increases 15 or 20 times. You become dehydrated. As soon as 30 minutes, you lose fluid. Up to two quarts of sweat per hour. But more than anything else, you get thirsty. 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 Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Drink it. No other beverage enters the bloodstream faster and rehydrates you better. Chug it. Nothing quenches a deep down body thirst better. Scientifically tested, athletically proven. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's gotta be Gatorade. Are you a jock? Like to rock. ESPN presents Jock Rock, the greatest crowd rock and sports anthems of all time on one CD. You can't get any closer to the action without getting hurt. It's not for fans, it's for fanatics. Jock Rock at record stores everywhere. Hey Remington, shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. Remington's created the Triple Foil, the only shaver with three narrow microscreens to cross-cut each whisker three times. For hard-to-shave places on hard-to-shave faces. The Remington Triple Foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. And for women, a silky smooth shave in or out of the shower. The Remington Wet Dry. This holiday season, while you're shopping, we'll be dropping a ton of money in the Discover Card Big Payback. Now, every time you use your card, you're automatically entered in our holiday sweepstakes. The more you shop, the more chances you have to win. Weekly bonus prizes of $50,000 or land the ultimate $1 million grant prize. It pays to discover the card with the Big Payback. Great day to build a sandcastle or race triathlon on the shores of Lake Michigan. It is extremely choppy and Graham, That guy's got to love it, Nate LaRonda. See the smile on his face right now? That's because of the waves. If it was nice and calm, he wouldn't be excited about it, but it, this is his type of race. On the other side, you got a guy like Mike Pig who doesn't like the swim, and I guess this really accentuates the best swimmers become even better. It's very important for Mike to get out there and draft and get into a group. I think the weaker swimmers, it's, it's going to be... Uh, 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 course management to work together to stay with Nate Randy. They can't let him get away. What kind of factor are wetsuits? Wetsuits are huge. Wetsuits are buoyant. They keep you afloat, especially with the waves like this. The people, they have no body fat on these guys. When they're out there in the waves, they would just sink. The wetsuits keep them up. And perhaps that's an advantage to some of the uh, not great swimmers, unlike that person, Michaela Jones, who loves the rough weather, and she's outstanding. Paula Newby Fraser, the queen of the Ironman in Hawaii. She'll be hard-pressed today on the short distance, but there's no question that this is a very challenging swim. Olympic distance triathlon, that means a kilometer and a half swim, 40K on the bike, and then a 10K run. This is pretty well standard, and there's no question in terms of Olympic distance. This is the premier event of the year, and here go the men from the beaches. It's a swim start, actually, and you can see right away plowing into the large waves. The heart rates are going right now from about 80 to about 160. The first 100 meters, they're fighting for positions. They blast out of their... Then they'll settle into the pace, which we'll see later. Nate LaRondi wants to scoot out to the lead. He would love to set himself up for a terrific swim. He's got to lead by a couple of minutes if he's going to have any chance at all. The men nicely underway on their swim. The women start just a few moments afterwards. And again, you can see the waves, which is really surprising given the fact that there's a break wall here. The break wall is what makes it tough. The swim goes along the break wall. The, wa the waves hit the break wall, and then they come back. When that happens, it pushes you again. So the athletes are getting pushed from both sides, and you never really get a good stroke going. The rhythm, you know, the hands crossing over instead of going in right in front, and you never get a good pull. The good swimmers, like McKaylee from Australia, they've had practice doing this. No question, it's a tough swim, and let's hear from two of the toughest swimmers. The swim, uh, I think, is going to be interesting because if the wind picks up, it's going to be a rough swim, and I think that really, you know, you get really good pool swimmers who are used to swimming in flat water, and I think it's very, very different. And it, it's much harder, in fact, to swim in, in open water with a big drop. 
So I think uh, that suits me to a certain extent. You know, it's very straightforward, out and back, and, you know, I'd love it to be a little choppy out there, <laughs> make it a little tougher. You know, I think that'll benefit the better swimmers if it is a little tougher out there. There is a few waves out there. Now, Graham, let's talk about what you are listing as the keys to the swim. These are the two favorites in your mind? Simon Lessing, he's a good swimmer. You'll see him be out with the front guys. Mike Pig's got to hang with him. And Michaela Jones? Michaela, she'll dominate the swim. Perfect conditions for her. I hope Karen can stay with her because that'll give us a race. That'll make for a great race. And no surprise, as we take a look at the men's leader right now, it is Nate LaRondi. That's no surprise at all. He probably, though, needs two minutes at least if he's going to win this race. Definitely two minutes. And it doesn't seem like he's getting away early. Hopefully he can stretch that out for himself later on. But again, the conditions would favor him. Simon Lessing in second spot right now and Spencer Smith in third. So the swim largely going the way we expect. Spencer and Simon have a huge rivalry. They don't like to get away from each other. They stay there. They make each other hurt. They've got a, you know, sort of, I beat you this week, you beat me the next week, and they play off that. And, you know, I think they get the little scorecard, so we'll see what happens today. Perhaps a rivalry as well with the Australians, Michaele Jones and Rena Bradshaw. They are 1-2 right now. You can see to the right of your screen the leader with the women, Michaele Jones, and you get a good feel for the fact that they're swimming into the waves right now. And they're still staying in a pack. You can see them working together. Very important that they keep doing that. I don't think that'll last for 1,500 meters. So the leaders right now, Nate Larundi, Simon Lessing, and Spencer Smith in a the group, then Carlos Lamba and Alec Rukasoyev from Russia. With the women, it's Jones, Bradshaw, Ingram, Dalton, and Smyers about midway through the swim. It happens once a year, and the time is now. The Ford Factory Authorized Clearance at your Suburban Detroit Ford dealers. No. The incredible savings on new 94 Fords. Like $2,000 cash back with the purchase of any new 94 Ford Pro. Or how about $2,000 cash back on Pro with a 24-month red carpet lease. No. Great selection and trade-in values are better than ever. Hurry before the Ford Factory Authorized Clearance is gone. See Atkinson Ford in Belleville. No. Boxing Illustrated said Gonzalez Carvajal won was pure war. They called it fight of the year. Boxing editor Bert Sugar said Gonzalez Carvajal 2 was a monument to fury. What people will say about Gonzalez Carvajal 3 is strictly in the hands of the fighters. The real thing in the bull ring. Gonzalez Carvajal 3 plus three other championship fights Saturday, November 12th, live on pay-per-view. Welcome back to the Chicago Triathlon. Michael Landsberg, Graham Fraser, and right there, Nate LaRondi leading Simon Lessing by about a body length and Spencer Smith right behind him. So the first leg, the first half of the swim, not great for Nate. The group is staying together, which is what you want to have when you have a great race. It's not what Nate had in his plan. Now you can see when they make the turn around that buoy just how choppy it is there. The water looks like it's moving fast. It's just going all over the place. I don't know how those guys can swim there. There's no question it's easier coming home, though. They had the benefit of the waves behind them. And right now, Nate LaRondi. Boy, is he ever moving with the waves behind him. And he's starting to put a little bit of a lead on Simon Lessing and Spencer Smith and the rest of the guys, including Mike Pig. He's obviously got the strength and the endurance to carry that through. With the women, McKaylee Jones rounding the marker. Then it's Rena Bradshaw right on her heels as well. And yeah, the women are staying together again. Now, I thought Wendy Ingram would be the one to lead this thing. We've seen in many of the other shows we've done that Wendy's been the one to take off. She hasn't done that today. Obviously, the waves affect her more than the Australian girls. Ingram in third spot right now, but it's Michaela Jones as she flies for home. Michaela Jones, a terrific swimmer, and she said she'd love these conditions, and she is making the rest of the field pay. Here is the chase pack of men, Smith and Lessing and Pig and Rukasoyev and there is the leader right now Nate LaRondi so he is having a great second leg to the swim they have about a 500 meter run to the transition zone so the swim if you don't get way ahead may not necessarily be a lead at all because some of the guys may run quicker have a better transition with that type of distance now the, the swim here is really just to set the tone on who's going to ride the bikes together 
When we take a look at this bike course, it's flat, it's fast, and the groups will form out there. So the swim is very important to see who you're going to bike with. There's the chase pack of men, and here is the leader, Nate LaRondi, as he hits the shores, and he is going to have a lead. The question is, how big a lead? He takes a quick peek back. It is substantial. He had a great second leg. And look at the crowd cheering on the hometown favorite, Nate LaRondi. Canadian Mark Bates, also a good swim, setting himself up. Here comes Nate LaRondi into transition. He's got the wetsuit half peeled off. So the long transition is a factor, like I said, because you've got to run with that in your legs also. The wetsuit, they get tight to your legs. It makes it very, very difficult to run. Notice Nate looked behind him as soon as he got out of the water. That was his key. How far am I ahead? Do I have to fly through this thing or what? And he is attempting to do exactly that. Again, it takes a little bit longer with the wetsuit. Nate Lorandi, here come the rest of the men into transition. Simon Lessing is there. Spencer Smith is there. Nate Lorandi needs every second he can get on the bike. If he's going to have any shot at all, that's Greg Welsh on the right as well. Still have not seen Mike Pig. It's Nate's disadvantage to have that group come out together. There's no way one guy out there alone, maybe 20 seconds ahead, is going to hold off six guys in a pack coming in behind him. There's no way Nate's going to, you're going to see him get swallowed up here. Simon Lessing and Spencer Smith almost identical out of the water. You've got Garrett McCarthy. You've got a number of others as they all go out. There's Greg Welsh and still the question is where's Mike Pig, the premier cyclist? Not in the top five. It's Lorandi and Smith and Lessing of both about 20 seconds behind Nate Lorandi. Carlos Lamba and then David Smith. Lamba and Smith will not be a factor in this race. I guess the biggest question is, has Lorandi built up enough of a lead? Nothing like last year. And here's McKelly Jones, the first woman out of the water. In behind her, fellow Australian Rena Bradshaw and Wendy Ingram. You've got the three best swimmers in the sport of triathlon coming out together. The key here is how far is Karen Smyers behind? Because she's the one who can move on the run. No doubt about it. McKaylee Jones had the kind of swim that she wanted. The question is, is Smyers too far back? And McKaylee Jones with a super transition. She is in and out in a flash. McKaylee Jones, the leader onto the bike right now. Is that Karen Smyers? That is Karen Smyers. No, it's not Karen Smyers. We need to see Karen, because Karen, like I said, is the one that can move in there with her. Wayne Ingram's not strong in the bike. Rita Bradshaw's not strong in the bike. So we've got to have Karen Smyers to make this a women's race. If McKaylee knows when they get to that turnaround that she doesn't see Karen, she can get in a nice pace and cruise through this thing. It's Jones right now by 15 over Bradshaw. Then it's Ingram, Dalton. In fact, Karen Smyers is fifth, about a minute behind McKaylee Jones. That could be a major factor. Here's the men's leader right now, Nate Lorandi, pounding away. He knows that Pig and Lessing and the best in the world are chasing him. He knows it's only a matter of time. When he saw that group not too far behind him, he knows it's only a matter of time. What a cycle this should be. 40 kilometers, the terrain is very flat, and it should be extremely fast, and this guy's got to love it. My goal is to put people behind me, and, and I, need, I want a minute lead off the bike. Uh, the bike ride, uh, very, very flat course, uh, fast. Um, you know, uh, just have to keep your head down and your butt up and uh, just watch out for a bit of traffic here and there. Oh, it's exciting. How often do you get to ride down a busy freeway like Lakeshore Drive, you know? You, you don't, and uh, that's what makes it fun here. You, you know where you are, you can count the buildings along the way, and you know you'll always see a strange face. It's a lightning quick bike. Let's talk about the keys, first of all, with the men. The big man's got to put the hammer down. you got Greg Welch, Jeff, Jeff Devlin, all the real runners in behind you. Simon Lessing, he's got to put time on them. The question is, how much will Pig lead by? Now, with the women, what's the key? Karen Smyers has to make up the time she lost in the swim. Otherwise, she's not going to run the Kaylee down. There's not a chance. Let's pick up the men's leaders right now, and there is Greg Welsh. Welsh trying to chase down the men's leader. Still, Nate LaRondi. There's Garrett McCarthy, and... There is Nate Lorandi, so it's one, two, three, with Lessing and Pig in behind. They are already starting to form the groups. Now they're going to work together, and they don't want Mike Pig to come up there. So these guys got to be smart and say, okay, guys, let's push each other. Let's keep the Pig man back. You saw the leader, Nate Lorandi, check a look behind him, and these are the two guys that he sees smoking in behind. Simon Lessing and Mike Pig side by side on a mission. What a mental game. You get the two premier guys in the sport right there, Mike Pig and Simon Lessing, the runner, the biker, the strategy. You know, it's not just turn the brain off and go. These guys are thinking out there. With the women, it's McKaylee Jones, and she is really by her lonesome. She had a terrific swim, and she's one of the most balanced athletes around. She can swim, she can bike, and she can run. And early on, you get the feeling this might be her day. Australian McKaylee Jones, the former world champion. 
it's a very tough race for Michaela because she's out there all alone. You see the guys, they're together, they can push, they can work. She's got to say, okay, I got to push the pace all by myself. Already a change in leaders. Simon Lessing is up there and he's going to make a move on Greg Welsh. There's a whole pack of guys together. Mike Pig in behind as well. So it's Lessing and Welsh and Lorandi and a whole host of others. This is going to script. Got all the runners sitting there together on the bike. Now the pig man, he's working his way up through the back of the field. Those guys know he's there. So they don't want to have Pig get ahead. They want to stay with him, so they should work together here. Greg Welch, look for him. Lessing and Pig and Welch and Lorandi and McCarthy, really almost identical times right now as they are nicely in the cycle with the women. It's Jones, Bradshaw, Ingram, Smyers, and Peters. So I did some checking and I found out $2.99 is really the same thing as $3, except it's a penny less. So some burger joints got a meal, cost $2.99. Big whoop. Who cares if it's only $2.99 if I'm not going to like eating it? But if you make it taste good, you know, like a Whopper. Flame broiled, not fried. Maybe throw in some fries and a drink. I'll gladly pay you $2.99. <laughs> hey, I'd even go as high as $3.02. Burger King, get your burgers worth. The Miller Genuine Draft Rusty Wallace Stock Car. See it. Hear it. Feel it. Catch it if you can. Uh, I'm an Australian kid. Being physically active is in my skin. There are days where it's more intense, and there are days that it's less intense. But I'm always active. It's not a fad. I don't do it in order to keep in shape for business. I do it because it's part of me. I think in life it's really important to be a player and not a spectator. Sometimes it's difficult, but it's worth it. ESPN2, people who do. Welcome back to Chicago, the home of Michael Jordan. He owns this city, but on this day, perhaps he's leasing it out to a couple of great triathletes. What a race this has turned out to be. Simon Lessing and Mike Pig nicely onto the bike. These two guys are flying. They're one, two, and it's nobody else right now. Those guys are in the big gears, just hammering. For people who don't know what cycling is, the gear ratios they're pushing is incredible. They're probably going close to 50 kilometers an hour down Lakeshore Boulevard right now. And they got a headwind coming back. So that's going to make a chance for Pig maybe to take off on Lessing out there. Here they go at the turnaround, which means the cycle is exactly half over. It was an incredible first half for Mike Pig. Keep in mind, he was about a minute out when they came out of the water, but he's made it all up right now. Meanwhile, Michaela Jones all by herself. And you say that makes it tougher, don't you? Now, mentally, she's just got to work all by herself. There's no one to pick off. She's not passing anybody. There's no one coming in close behind her. So it's just, you know, watch the heart rate. Make sure you're going fast enough because you could sort of ease off and start dogging it out there. And look at Karen Smyers pressing up from them behind. She started off number five on the bike. She has now moved into fourth spot. Karen Smyers trying to close the gap on Jones. This is so trademark of Karen. She comes out, she passes them one by one, and usually she ends up, you know, first or second in every race. Wendy's used to seeing her go by like this. Now, Karen's got to get in striking distance. She talked earlier that she likes the crowds. She's got to get in a position to enjoy the crowds. If she's far back, the crowds don't matter. There's no question that so far the factor in this race has been Smyers' swim. She was not sharp. She let McKaylee Jones get out of sight in the swim, and that's the difference right now. Smyers cycling well, catching up on Jones, but the question is, will she have enough? She's now picking off Rena Bradshaw. Rena wasn't expecting to see Karen this early in the race, but Karen obviously is focused on McKaylee. She doesn't even notice Rena as she goes by there. Karen Smyers working so hard. I guess one of the questions now is, does she have to work too hard, expend too much energy to close the gap on Jones? If you get the lactic acid in the legs, it's very tough to run. Oh, what a battle. Simon Lessing now in second spot. Mike Pig just a little bit in front. Lessing so smooth on the bike. He has the long legs and he uses them. But here goes Mike Pig. Let's see what the lead is. And it's growing a little bit. I think Simon would like that motorbike to stay right in front of him so he could catch that draft there. But right now, Simon's focusing on not losing too much ground on Mike Pig. And Mike Pig's thinking, okay, I've, he's, I've lost him now. He's not getting a draft from me. It's time to put some ground on him. What a shot there of Mike Pig. Look at the face of Mike Pig driven now to try to make it to that second transition with the lead. You say he needs how much off the bike? He needs about a minute and a half to, to beat Simon. Simon can run a 31-minute 10K. Greg Welsh now in third spot. Welsh, he's kind of been tough in this position. 
he might be too far back to make a move on first and second, and there's no question he probably can outrun these guys. Yeah, never underestimate Greg Welch. He's got a 29 minute 10k pb so if he's fresh if he's got the bounce in his legs i would never count him out in any race at any time so this is setting up like a terrific race you've got guys one two who you know can cycle and welsh the terrific runner greg welsh in third spot right now really focused nate Larandi and garrett mccarthy there they're not thinking about greg welsh they know they're not going to run him. they're thinking about jeff devlin mark bates the guys in behind because we got a race going in behind and some of these guys could come up in the run with the women, we've got McKaylee Jones all by herself. She knows that Smyers can close the gap, but Jones looking so smooth right now. This is a day-long event, not just the pros racing, the amateurs, and the kids in the Dannon Kids Triathlon. Team. I liked running and I liked biking and my dad started doing the Chicago one so I just started doing this. So much stuff is going through your mind what you're gonna do and anything can pop up and happen. It really takes my breath away when I do it. about 25 miles a week in the running and um, I've done 60 a week on the bike but I usually do 20 to 30 <laughs> on the bike maybe 40 At first I was just doing it for fun but now I'm really serious about it all right, all right. How you feel? Okay, thank you. All right. Very good. Very good. I'm very proud of you. Yay! Thank you. And now, something different for dinner. It's Mrs. T's pierogies. It's pot pasta and pot potato. Not only do Mrs. T's pierogies taste delicious, but they're low in fat, too. Ooh. And what's more, this delectable treat is quick to fix. Prepare it as a side dish, serve it as a main course in so many great ways. Stir fry, Mexican, pan fried, Italian, or even traditional. Yum! Tasty and nutritious too. And don't forget, they're making it here. Look for Mrs. T's in your grocer's freezer. You crave that taste. That big, bold cranberry taste. Oh, big, bold taste! That one of a kind ocean spray taste. There's just nothing like it. Wow. Make a way! What if all the physical laws that we presume to be true weren't? What if the law of gravity were merely a suggestion? What if the body could pass through a solid wall? What if events we think physically impossible are happening in some corner of the universe? Remember, most science is just theory. And to explore such physical matters, refer to the force best represented as ESPN2. Great to have you in Chicago. Welcome back, everybody. Michael Landsberg and Graham Fraser here for the Chicago Triathlon. And one of the reasons why the athletes love to come to Chicago the shop. Paul and Newby Fraser told me personally this is the best place to shop. Okay, here we go with the man Mike Pig blowing past some amateurs. It's Pig all by himself. Simon Lessing nowhere in sight. Mike's down to his business now. He's making the ground up. It's just whether it's enough. Simon, he's just like we talked earlier, just trying to hang in there. Plus what he's thinking, exactly what he's doing there. He's looking behind to see how much time he's putting on the other guys. Because he's thinking, well, Greg Welch, he runs pretty good. I got to watch him. I got to watch Jeff Devlin. He's also another good runner. So the race going true to form, the question right now, and it lingers in the air is Mike Pig's lead going to be big enough to hold off Simon Lessing? And has Mike Pig expended too much energy doing that? Sometimes you go out there and put so much ground on the bike, you get off the bike, you got brick legs, and there's nothing worse than having brick legs. Great look at the Chicago scenery and the skyline as we catch up to McKaylee Jones, and she has nobody to catch up to. Again, she has been by herself since the cycle began. 
The only people that Michaela gets to ride with is some of the slower pro men, and she gets to pass a lot of the amateurs who still happen to be on the bike course at about uh, 15 miles an hour. Makes them look kind of funny. Karen Smyers in second place right now. What a bike for Karen Smyers. She was in sixth, then fifth, fourth, third. She's in second now, and she's trying to race down Michaela Jones. Look at the determination on Karen's face. You don't see that in a lot of the athletes. She's got that extra gear that she tries to give all the time. And that guy's got the gear as well. Mike Pig, no doubt, the premier cyclist in the sport of triathlon. He is magnificent on the bike as he prepares to move into transition. Mike Pig's going to have his lead, but we'll have to see how big his lead is. Here comes Mike Pig. Every second will count in transition. He knows he's got those guys in behind him. Like he said, every single second. He's done his job. He's done exactly what he had to do. Now he's got to get those shoes on quick, get out there as fast as he can, and get into that five and a half minute pace right away. He's got to get those legs going for the run, and here goes Mike Pig. Mike Pig making his way out with a lead, but the question is how much will it be on Simon Lessing? Lessing's going to be number two. We're waiting for Simon Lessing, and here comes Simon Lessing. Simon's definitely within striking distance. He's going to see Mike Pig out there three times on this three-loop run course. Mike's not going to like the sight of seeing him that close to him. Simon Lessing, and I guess right now the key is quick transition, get out there and start to make up some ground because he does have some ground to make up. Simon Lessing's a great runner, though. When you get to these races, you see 30 seconds sometimes between first and fifth. Transitions can be 10 of those, so it's very, very important. Simon Lessing now getting directions, a little hesitation there, and you get the feeling this race is going to come down to a matter of seconds. Here comes Greg Welsh in third, and he is perhaps the best runner of all. Don't count him out at all. Those guys know he's there. He is, again, within striking distance. He can probably put a minute, a minute and a half on Simon Lessing on a good day if Simon's not having a good day. There's the defending champ, Nate LaRondi. Garrett McCarthy is there as well. So, too, is Jeff Devlin. But three of the premier athletes in the sport, one, two, three. Those guys are not worrying about Greg Welsh. He's gone. He's off. They're worrying about Mark Bates, Alec Rukasev. There's a host of other guys that are going to come in behind because Garrett McCarthy is not known as a runner. What a race this should be on the run. The run is three loops, and it is going to be a battle all the way. One. 21. Pigs lead over Simon Lessing, then it's Welsh, Devlin, and McCarthy. That's in the neighborhood of what it might take to win it. He said one and a half. We're going to be close. We could have a sprint finish. Okay, now with the women, you know that McKaylee Jones is going to be in first. The question is, how large is the lead? But unlike the men, where you know that Lessing's probably a better runner than Mike Pig, I don't think you can say that Karen Smyers is a better runner than McKaylee Jones. McKaylee and Karen have battled all year back and forth. The run times are almost identical. They're within 30 seconds. Karen, coming out of the swim that far behind, we saw her work on the bike. We know she's working that hard. She's trying to make up that ground. Going to take a bit of her running legs out. Look at McKaylee Jones. She's expecting a battle, and perhaps that's why she's wearing her helmet. Well, they always say that when you race, your brain shuts off. Maybe that's what happened there. She's gotten rid of the helmet, and she knows she could take a quick peek at where Karen Smyers is as she moves into transition. Karen, very determined there. You see, she's possessed. She's got to get close. She knows she's got to get close. None of the other girls can see her. There's Donna Peters. Donna didn't make the ground up on the bike that she usually has to to be in the race. The two best runners in the women's field right now are likely that woman, Karen Smyers, and McKaylee Jones, and they are 1-2 right now as Karen gets a little mixed up. Got to make a left, and there's the left turn. I think that some of these athletes have added a lot of time to their times through their not knowing which way to go in the transitions. They should know better to study which route they're taking exactly out of that transition area. And here's Rena Bradshaw, number four. She also is a very good runner and a very good swimmer. If she becomes a better cyclist, she could be a world champion. She's very new at the sport. She's in her sophomore year. Look for things for her in the future. But Donna Peters knows she's in behind her. She's going to be picking off Donna very quickly. Again, if Karen left too much on the bike, Rena could be a factor with Karen. Rena Bradshaw, an excellent, excellent runner, as you say. She's only been doing it for one year. It's McKaylee Jones with 107 on Karen Smyers. That's a large lead. Then Bradshaw, Peters, and Martha Sorensen, all three, four, and five. Right now, after the bike in the Chicago Triathlon. With the men, it's Mike Pig, and Pig in behind him. No sign of Simon Lessing right now, so Pig still all by himself. Look at the stride of Simon Lessing compared to Mike Pig. Very long. He's got that extra three inches per stride, which really does make a difference. It can certainly make a difference over 10K, and talking about long strides, how about this woman, Michaela Jones? Very similar, actually, to Simon Lessing. Yeah, she's got the long legs, and she uses them to her advantage. A lot of people who have longer legs don't use them to advantage. They've been educated. They know. The run looks like this. 10 kilometers. It's three loops. It is very technical in the sense lots of turns, lots of slowdowns. It makes it pretty tough. There's a lot of other athletes out there who are very good runners, and, you know, I still think it's a running race because it's not a 
it's not a tough bike course, but you know, it's a little tough because you know, you could be out there facing wind, but I, th I still think it's going to be a runner's race. The run, I think, is going to be great for me. I love having loop courses. Um, the age groupers will be done racing. Hopefully they're going to stick around and watch. And uh, I'm a real sucker for uh, racing in front of a crowd, so I think that part will help me out. Knowing where competition is going to make a lot of heat from the back and also very interesting from the front because you can watch how it's developing each lap because there's just 180 degree turnarounds and you can see your competitor and that's a nice advantage to have in the race for a leader or a trailer. I think definitely it'll be dis decided on the run, um, like all races nowadays. Over the last few years the sport's become so competitive that uh, really most of the races have been decided within the last uh, mile or two on the run. So let's talk about the keys to the run. First of all with the men. Simple math for Mike Pig. He knows Simon can run a 32, he better run a 33. And with the women? Kaylee, she's got a bonk. Unlikely to happen today due to the conditions. Michaela Jones, if she's paced herself well, should sail through the finish line. We heard from Pig and Lessing in particular. You know, you listen to their comments, and it's like they knew exactly what was going to happen. They knew it would come down to the end of the run, and that's where they are right now. Nicely into the run. Mike Pig still nicely ahead of Simon Lessing. This is Mike Pig's world championship. He cannot go to the world championship this year. He's actually been banned, which maybe we can talk about a little later. But this is his race. Let's see if he runs like it's his race. Mike Pig still with the lead of about a minute on Simon Lessing. It hardly looks like Lessing's moving. Yeah, Simon really looks like it's effortless to him. If I were look at the two runners, you think Mike Pig's going much, much faster. Now this little guy, he's got the little short stride, but he's got a big turnover and he can really motor out there. Australian Greg Welsh, a former world champion. Lessing, a former world champion as well. One, two, three. And there's Jeff Devlin, who always seems to be up there. Jeff, now the key for him is, did he leave too much on the bike? He was so far behind in the swim, he really had to motor all by himself to catch up to the group. Let's see if he can hang on in the run. That makes a very, very difficult thing to do. He's got Canadian Mark Bates chasing him as well. And here's Michaela Jones. Try to get a reading on her face. Is she still fresh? She, she doesn't look like she's too fresh. She looks like she's hurting out there. But you got to remember, this is a pain sport. You're always going to have some kind of pain. And when you're pushing to the max, when the heart rate's at 175, even up towards the 180, it's going to hurt. Doesn't mean that you're going to bonk out there, though. And she's also going slightly uphill. These hills are not steep, to be sure, but there are long grades that kind of make it tough. And Michaela Jones perhaps hurting just a little bit right now. With the men, Mike Pig, Simon Lessing 1-2, then Greg Wells trying to run them down, and then Jeff Dedlin and Ken Glaw trying to hold everybody else off. But right now, it's a great race with the men. With the women, Michaela Jones and Karen Smyers 1-2, Rena Bradshaw had moved back to third. It could only come from here. Canada, the home of ice. Molson Ice. Ice brewed by North America's oldest brewery to be colder and colder. Get smooth as ice. Molson Ice. From the land where ice was born. Pros wear Russell Athletic because it's made tough. It has to be. Hey, kid! Hey, you got my lucky jersey. Yeah? I got kind of carried away. Can I have it back? You gotta be kidding. Come here, you little pipsqueak. You don't want that. No! You want athletic wear that can survive anything? Oh. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Who was that kid? I don't know. I saw him up.
Welcome back to the race of the year. Michael Landsberg, Graham Fraser, and Mike Pig continuing to lead and lead well, but in his face, you can sense a real feeling of pain. Now, you said that this is his world championships. He's been banned. Why? Mike competed in a race in Australia that was an unofficial world event, and the ITU, the world governing body, declared athletes who competed that were not allowed to go championship this year, so he's had to focus on other races. And this is exactly the one to focus on in terms of Olympic distance, this one far and away the best in the world. I think this is to Olympic distance what perhaps the Ironman is to the full distance triathlons. It's the biggest race, it's got the most competitors, it's got big prize money, good elite field, it's got it all here in Chicago. And it's got Simon Lessing stalking Mike Pig right now, Lessing feeling some pain as well. Michaela Lee Jones looks a little fresher now than the last time we saw her. And Kaylee's holding a very, very good pacer. She knows Karen's going to run a certain pace out there, so she knows she can't sort of cruise too much. She's going to sort of say, okay, today I'm going to run this, 35 minutes, and this is the pace I have to go, which is kind of what Simon Lessing does. I watch the really, really good runners. They know how to set the pace. They know what they have to do to get the job done, and that's what they do. Simon Lessing can't cut it too fine, though, and here is Karen Smyers. Smyers in second place, really pushing, trying to close the gap as she runs with Jeff Devlin, but those two are in different laps of the race. Here's Mike Pig, the men's leader, trying to keep ahead of Simon Lessing. It's a real battle right now. You can see a little bit of sweat in the body. They're working very, very hard. The pace they're running out there right now, he's probably running a five and a half. Now you got Simon in sight. This is exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to be in that, that distance where he can make the sprint. Mike does not want to see him. There's not much much left to go in this race, so this is going to be interesting. Right behind him, just coming into focus, is Simon Lessing. What a race this is going to turn out to be. Lessing right in behind Mike Pig. How much of an advantage is it for Simon Lessing to see Mike Pig while Pig can't see him? It's like an animal stalking. He's right there. He's within his grasp. He can set the pace. Mike doesn't know how he's, he's coming in that far behind. It's better to be in behind. And here's the third guy in the factor, Greg Welsh. It's unlikely that he'll be able to chase down Lessing, but he is a solid third right now as he comes downhill. He's in cruise mode. He knows he's not going to catch the first two guys, and he knows the guys in behind aren't going to get him. And with his running ability, he can just cruise into a nice third-place finish. Simon Lessing trying to race down Mike Pig, and the lead just about the same. It is remarkable that after this length of time, about an hour 40, there's only that much separating the two. Mike Pig, the leader by about 10, 15 seconds on Simon Lessing. Then it's Greg Welsh, Jeff Devlin, and Canadian Mark Bates with a great run with the women. It's all McKaylee Jones right now. It happens once a year, and the time is now. The Ford Factory Authorized Clearance at your suburban Detroit Ford dealer. Now. Incredible savings on new 94 Fords. Like $2,000 cash back with a purchase of any new 94 Ford Pro. Or how about $2,000 cash back on Pro with a 24-month red carpet lease. Now. Great selection and trade-in values are better than ever. Hurry before the Ford Factory Authorized Clearance is gone. See Gene Buckman Ford in Ypsilanti. Now. Where do you go when you need something special? You're hungry and thirsty, you want a good time. How about a place that's filled with fun people? A food that's delicious, the best you can find. Come on in, take a harvest. For food and fun, enjoy Guy Holleran's Restaurant and Sports Bar. Located in the Holiday Inn North Campus on Plymouth Road and US 23. Come on in. Come on in. News is finally available. Bob knows. Morning, Bob. Your email is right on. The hoop season is red hot. With ESPN Net on Prodigy, Bob talks to the Sports Center pros every day. Hey, Bob. For answers to your NFL questions, check out the inside info on coaching changes. What you want, when you want. Call 1 800 ESPN Pro. Get ESPN Net on Prodigy. Hey, how about some Super Bowl tickets? Simon Lessing, as he has been throughout the entire run, looking in behind Mike Pig. That is the margin right now. The best field of the year in triathlon. Michael Landsberg and Graham Fraser here for the battle of the year in triathlon. Well, it's going to be interesting to see who's got the sprint legs to kick this one out. Just because Simon may be the faster 10K runner doesn't mean he's got the quicker sprint. Maybe Mike's got that power left in his legs. It's funny how this all set up throughout the race. He just had the feeling it would come down to a sprint to the finish. No sprint with the women. Michaela Jones continues to lead Karen Smyers by a healthy amount. Her stride's still good. The arms are still moving. She's still got her pace going. It's going to be very tough for Karen to make up that ground. And here comes Karen Smyers. And she has 
to the loop. Again, it's 10K each loop, about 3.3K. Karen Smyers all by herself, so it's Jones and Smyers and nobody else. Those crowds are building. We're going to have a good cheer at the finish line when we see all these athletes come sprinting through. And we've also got a great race going for fourth, fifth, and sixth place. There's a lot of guys out there, and Canadian Mark Bates is in the thick of it. And here's Welsh in third spot right now. Welsh, a terrific runner, probably just a little bit too far after the bike to be able to cut into the lead of Mike Pig and Simon Lessing. But Welsh really focused, and he looks fresher than anybody. Yeah, he's moving along probably a little quicker. When you look at the splits at the end of the day, I wouldn't be surprised to see Greg Welch have that fastest run split. In third right now, former world champion as well from Australia, and here it is, Simon Lessing and Mike Pig as they go uphill. Uphill, first of all, who does that benefit? Mike Pig's got a very strong legs on the bike, but Simon's the runner. It's got to benefit him, and he's the one coming in from behind. Here's the move that he's been making all throughout the run. He's closing the gap. Simon Lessing going to try to make the pass on Mike Pig. Does Mike Pig know he's there? I don't think he even knows he's there at this point. He hasn't acknowledged him yet. We said nine seconds. It looks like we're going to be pretty damn close with that nine seconds. Whoa, Pig kicks it in gear. Lessing passes him. It's Lessing first. Will Pig let him go? No, Pig is going to try to come back. That was a surprise move. Mike didn't even know he was there. Now he's making the move back. Let's see if Simon can hang on with him. The race will be decided right now. Lessing kicks it back in gear, and now it's up to Pig to stay with him. Look at Lessing hammer. What could be better? An uphill finish makes them work all the way through. Mike's fallen behind a bit now. He's got to tuck in behind and work hard. He's got to be tough, mentally tough to hang in there. What a move by Lessing. Pig wouldn't let him go once, then Lessing made a second move. And right now, Simon Lessing pulling away from Mike Pig as they literally sprint to the finish here at the Chicago Triathlon. It looks like the runner is going to be dominant again. Just like Simon said in his interview, the runners are winning the races. Let's see if Pig can hang in there. You know what's amazing? It looks like Simon Lessing is hardly moving, but he's flying and he's put some serious time on Mike Pig. I think Mike Pig would like to borrow those rollerblades on that guy who just went through there. We're almost to the finish line. Mike's falling a bit behind. It's uphill. It's going to be hard for him to make up that ground. It's just like a horse race. The question is, will he have enough legs to make a second move? And I think the answer in this case will be no. Pig is not going to have it. It's going to go likely to Simon Lessing. Very, very frustrating for Mike. He did his race right to the plan but he ran out of that time, just a little tiny bit of time. A minute and a half or thereabouts when they started the run and the question all around was, would it be enough? Simon Lessing takes a quick peek and he sees Mike Pig now somewhat in the distance, although it's tough sometimes to pick out who the runner is because there's more than one guy on the course. Yeah, that's the disadvantage of having the amateurs out there with them. It's hard to tell. He takes another peek. Simon Lessing, I don't think he's sure where Mike Pig is. Here comes Simon Lessing to the finish line. World champion in 1992, trying to win the big Biggest race of the year in 1994, Simon Lessing from Britain, all by himself now, trying to pour it on and bring it home. Simon Lessing, the best in the world on, on I was going to say on this day, he stops for a second. He's not sure where to go. Here he comes to the finish. Lessing does cross with Mike Pig coming in just behind him. What happened to Simon Lessing? Wouldn't that have been a story if he had a stop there? Would Mike Pig have passed him or let him go through there? That would have been one of the great moments in sports. Not that this wasn't a great moment. That comes down to one of the best tactical races I have seen run. Simon Lessing hug in there exactly what he had to do. Mike Pig, we said it would be nine seconds. I'd like to see the difference. It's not too far off there. I guess what Lessing was thinking was maybe he had another lap. Maybe someone called to him, take another lap. And here comes Greg Welsh. A woman coming in behind, Paula Newby Fraser taking another lap, but Greg Welsh finishes in third spot, looking fresher than all the rest. I think Greg maybe say, hey, you guys have second and first place prize money. I didn't hurt quite as much as you do. I'll take third. Here comes Canadian Mark Bates. What a run for Mark Bates. The final 2K were amazing, and he grabs fourth against a great field. And Alec Rukasoyev, who had a great swim, has a good run for fifth, and Jeff Devlin in sixth. That's amazing for Mark Bates to actually outrun Jeff Devlin, who's known as the runner in the sport. And Alec Rukasoyev, another great runner. Mark has improved dramatically. Kenny Glaw moving into seventh spot as he crosses the finish line, a real veteran in the sport, but still hanging up there with this terrific bunch of triathletes on this day in Chicago. The difference seven seconds Lessing and Pig after an hour and 48 that was the only difference then it's Greg Welsh Mark Bates and Alec Rukasoya let's listen in in the conversation between Lessing and Pig I was a bit worried that I wasn't going to catch up so I knew I had to work up work really really hard right from the start of the run so I started pushing uh, basically from the first hundred meters and and trying to you know work on the time difference between them between both of us the one, thing, the one thing he does well is uh, right out from the blocks, the guy is running 
five minute pace where I used the first three miles to get going in the rhythm and uh, still didn't hold them off. <laughs> but yeah, I think you accelerated and you accelerated the, the last lap definitely without a doubt. I saw it. Yeah, I was, I, I was picking it up. I didn't want to lose the <laughs> What do you think when you went by? I mean, uh, you, you had to work pretty hard. It's sore, it hurts, it hurts. <laughs> And then he almost gave it to me at the finish line, stopping at the barrel. <laughs> he started walking, he no, still had 10 would, yards to go. The guy waved me around. I know, he he went, I thought so, you were going to go. Yeah, I was like, I'm sure I have to finish. And he was saying, no, no, go around, go around again. So anyway. Now, what would have happened if he, if he would have like, stopped and gone around? Uh, I mean, he had me beat a, half, a quarter mile out, so it was his race. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. While well, the men <laughs> rest, the women continue to work. It's McKaylee Jones with a healthy lead. We'll see the finish right after this. You're an American. You've got the right to play bingo, the right to monster truck rallies, and the right to big, juicy burgers. So what happened? Someone slaps a low price on a fried little burger and calls it a deal? That's un-American. You have the right to go to Burger King. The right to get a Whopper, flame broiled, not fried. And the right to get that Whopper any size you want, with fries and a drink. Starting at just $1.99. It's all there in the Constitution. <laughs> Look it up. Burger King. Get your burgers worth. When you're active, your body heat increases. 15 or 20 times. You become dehydrated. As soon as 30 minutes, you lose fluids. Up to two quarts of sweat per hour. But more than anything else, you get thirsty. 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 Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Drink it. No other beverage enters the bloodstream faster and rehydrates you better. Chug it. Nothing quenches a deep down body thirst better. Scientifically tested, athletically proven. Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's gotta be Gatorade. When you're born, the curtain opens, air smacks your face, you're on, and hopefully, you will. No rehearsals, no going back. Welcome back to Chicago with the conclusion of the women's race. Donna Peters in fourth. She needed a lead after the bike. Donna's a bullet on the bike. She struggled a bit this year. She's been down with a virus that's taken out of her biking, so she hasn't been in a position to be in the finish line in a good spot. No struggle for this woman, Rena Bradshaw, an amazing young triathlete in her second year in triathlon. She is third against the best field in the world. She's won big races already in her career. She's doing very well in the World Cup Series. And here she is in Chicago, racing with the best. She's the second best in Australia. Here is the best in Australia. And on this day, the best in the world. McKaylee Jones moving into the finish, looking so smooth. Exactly, McKaylee, she won this thing in the swim. She blasted, got way out in front. No one was going to touch her this day. World champion in 1992, world champion in 1993, and against the best field in the world in 94. She is the champion again, and amazing. She's hardly breathing. Yeah, she looks like a little walk in the park. She's going to head over to the Mrs. T's pierogi tent and enjoy some of those Mrs. T's pierogies. High fives all around for McKaylee Jones, who on this day shows that nobody can touch her. I mean, wall-to-wall -wall victory for McKaylee Jones. And here comes Karen Smyers. She had to work so hard after a poor swim just to move into second, and the gap was just too large. If today was a duathlon, you took a swim out of it. Karen's time was actually faster than McKaylee's. Her bike ride was the same. Her run was a little faster. Unfortunately, the big waves took it out of her today. But it's a triathlon on this day. Karen Smyers, second best against the triathletes around the world. When they came to Chicago, it was McKaylee Jones, and Karen Smyers won too. Karen will be very happy with this. She's having a banner year. She's been so consistent. Rena Bradshaw, number three. What a terrific finish for Rena Bradshaw. And if you're looking to the future, there it is right there. He chased them down through the whole thing. Very hard to chase down quality athletes. The two premier athletes in the sport right there giving each other a hug. The camaraderie of the sport of triathlon. We always talk about that. They, they race each other hard, but at the end, they're friends. Rena Bradshaw, number three, but it's McKaylee Jones. 55 seconds over Karen Smyers. When you consider how good Smyers has been this year, that's an amazing margin for Michaela Jones. Bradshaw in third, Donna Peters in fourth, and Martha Sorensen in fifth spot right now as Smyers and Jones wait for everybody but Bradshaw to finish. Now, great fans come out for this, and it seems like everybody's got a different reason to come out. Butts, like no cellulite and stuff. <laughs> it's, it's an inspiration, it really is. Hey, Remington. 
Shave this. If you can grow it, we can shave it. Remington's created the triple foil, the only shaver with three narrow microscreens to cross-cut each whisker three times. For hard-to-shave places on hard-to-shave faces. The Remington Triple Foil. If you can grow it, we can shave it. And for women, a silky smooth shave in or out of the shower. The Remington Wet Dry. And now, something different for dinner. It's Mrs. T's pierogies. It's pot pasta and pot potato. Not only do Mrs. T's pierogies taste delicious, but they're low in fat, too. Ooh. And what's more, this delectable treat is quick to fix. Prepare it as a side dish, serve it as a main course in so many great ways. Stir fry, Mexican, pan fried, Italian, or even traditional. Yum. Tasty and nutritious, too. And don't forget, they're making it here. Look for Mrs. T's in your grocer's freezer. Welcome back to Chicago, where a clean head is good for aerodynamics and also for other things. Mike Pig, Michaela Jones, and Simon Lessing enjoying the post-race festivities. Simon Lessing was the winner. Mike Pig was seven seconds back. Then Greg Welsh, Mark Bates with a terrific day, and Alec Rukosoyev. Let's hear from those that dominated today. The last thing I wanted was to end up with the sprint, uh, 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 sprint finish because I think uh, Mike is definitely stronger on the sprints than I am. So I knew right from <clears throat> the time I caught him that I had to I had to try and make a gap straight away. This is the first time I got to see Simon run so hard, man. Usually we get off the bike together because he's strong in all three. And it was nice to put a minute gap on him and he had to earn that run. So, uh, but he's just a minute and a half faster and I couldn't answer his call when he came by. Halfway through the bike ride, you know, Mike Pig kind of just belting by and Simon Lessing and myself and uh, a few other guys, Nate LaRondi, and uh, we're all together and then uh, Simon went with him and, and none of us uh, could actually hold that pace uh, coming back down with the tailwind so it was, it was pretty tough so after that uh, I think the race started to slip away. Graham just an incredible battle between Simon Lessing and Mike Pig. In your mind what did it for Simon Lessing today? It's obviously the run. Simon's a gifted runner. He came off the bike within the range to strike Mike Pig. Mike ran the race he had to do. He, you know, he was dynamite on the bike. We saw him charging away but it wasn't enough. With the women, McKaylee Jones with a healthy 55-second victory over Karen Smyers, then Bradshaw, Peters, and Sorensen, but the day belonged to Jones. You know, definitely getting a gap out of the water. You know, that was my race plan, to, to swim out hard, and I was praying that the waves were going to be even bigger than what they were. You know, it sort of makes it a little tougher when, when you're a better swimmer. It definitely helps, and, you know, your technique changes a little bit. You shorten your, your stroke, and you tend to breathe on one side. Uh, you know, once you've been in the winter circle, you're never uh, happy completely with second, but um, I'm not terribly disappointed, I guess. I, I was a little bit concerned about how my legs were going to feel in this race, and actually I'm happy with the way my legs felt. Um, my bike and run were, were as good as I could have hoped today, I think. Um, and especially since knowing that this race in the past, I've really kind of fallen apart on the run. Um, it's been kind of a tough time of year for me. So I feel good in terms of that, but I'm real mad at myself about the swim. Um, but not much I can do about it now except hit the pool. So if there was a big scoreboard, it would read McKelly Jones 3 and Karen Smyers 2 so far this season. What was the big story for McKelly Jones today? I think when McKelly came down and saw the big waves out there today, her eyes lit up. The big surf, she's from Australia. It's a made for McKaylee Jones day. She got out of the water a minute ahead of Karen. You take the time on the bike and run, and that's the difference was the swim. So it was her kind of swim today. There's no question that the Hawaii Ironman is the premier event for ultra distance, but in terms of Olympic distance, there is simply nothing like Chicago. It's quite a sight. You got 4,000 people out there, bodies everywhere. You can't beat that. And to, to go with that, the best pro field you'll see in 1994. And an incredible race. It was Simon Lessing and it was McKelly Jones. For Graham Fraser, I'm Michael Landsberg saying so long from Chicago, so long from an amazing event, the Chicago Triathlon. Today's broadcast, the amazing Mrs. T's Chicago Triathlon, is brought to you by Mrs. T's Pierogies, unique pasta pockets hiding in your grocer's freezer. So long from Chicago.